Sony just released an update for the FX3. No longer is it basically the same camera as the A7S III, just in a different shell. They've made some changes to this camera, some for good, some maybe for worse. So let's take a look at it from the perspective of a YouTube filmmaker rather than a traditional video production background. But first, let's play some footage of the Cine EI mode, then we'll talk about it. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Sony made some changes to the FX3 that now really separate it from the A7S III. No longer is the base ISO for S-Log3 640, it is now 800, although Sony was claiming it was always 800, although there is a lot of proof out there that it was actually 640, including from Sony themselves. But that's one of the changes they made. It makes a very, very minuscule difference when you are actually shooting even in broad daylight. So the difference between 640 and 800, while you might notice it sometimes, it's really not that much of a problem. Now the big change with Cine EI mode is there's no longer picture profiles, uh, PP7 and PP8. They just completely got rid of those. They're just no longer in there. It goes from PP6 to PP9, which I find kind of weird. Now shooting an S-Log is its own separate mode on this camera, which, which I certainly don't mind. I don't think there's anything wrong with it because if you want to modify a normal picture profile, you can still, you can still set it to S-Log3, but S-Log2 does not exist on this camera anymore. S-Log2 is completely gone. Just a heads up for the people out there that might be wondering about that. Now you might be wondering, what is Cine EI? So the camera has two base ISOs, 800 now, and 12,800. You cannot record at an ISO other than those two base ISOs, but the, the files records metadata, so if you have Catalyst Browse, which is now integrated into Premiere Pro, you can adjust the ISO in post after that. It almost makes the video files more like RAW files in a way, being able to make that adjustment in post. Personally, I don't really use Adobe Premiere anymore. I used to, but then I quit. I use DaVinci now, so hopefully in the future, maybe they'll be able to integrate Catalyst Browse and DaVinci, but in the meantime, not really concerned about it as I pretty much stuck to the base ISOs to begin with. Now, one change I really don't like that they made is in the Cine EI mode, you can no longer use auto white balance, which for a lot of people, not a problem. They didn't use auto white balance anyways, but as a run and gun YouTube filmmaker, especially for the type of YouTube videos I make where I'm so busy focusing on a million other things, the last thing I want to have to check is the white balance. Have I ever had a problem with auto white balance in the past when in my videos? Maybe like one time, but it wasn't that big of a deal and I fixed it in post. So I'm not a fan of the fact that you can no longer use auto white balance but you can switch over to flexible ISO mode from the Cine EI mode. And the camera basically works as if it did before the update. So you have that option, but you can no longer just press one button and swap between the two base ISOs. I wish they could have somehow implemented or combined the two. I wish there was a workaround for using auto wide balance in Cine EI mode, but there isn't. So now after testing out the Cine EI mode and using the white balance and having to manually adjust the white balance, I've realized one thing. I need to get a better monitor for my camera because the monitor I'm using is very cheap and doesn't display the right Kelvin tone in terms of the white balance on the monitor. And I keep on, I always check the monitor I actually have up here up top for my framing and everything and rely on the camera for auto white balance in the past at least so i was never worried about checking it. and while it might look fine on the monitor 
in reality the white balance was completely thrown off in my previous video. Now when you're working with 10-bit video footage you can recover the white balance. It's not quite like uh, adjusting the white balance on a raw photo in Lightroom but you have a little bit more you have a little bit more leeway than you would with 8-bit footage. So I was thankfully able to fix it mostly in post but it's definitely something I'm going to have to keep track of and make adjustments in the future. But in the end, I think this is probably a good habit I will form and I probably should have been manually adjusting my white balance in the past anyway, so it works out. Now with Cine EI mode, you can not adjust the ISO besides the two base ISOs, but you can adjust the exposure index. So you might be wondering why you would want to adjust that. Now you normally want to shoot at either one of the two base ISOs because you want to be able to capture the most dynamic range you possibly can in your image. So you have the most information in the highlights in the shadows and then in post you can always make adjustments breaking down the highlights or making the shadows darker you can make your exposure adjustments in post and that's where Cine EI comes in handy because you can lower the exposure index or raise it so you can kind of get an idea or feel what your image will look like in post when you either lower or raise the exposure depending on what you want but you typically always want to expose properly uh, for probably about 1.7 to 2 stops over is my sweet spot that I expose my S-Log footage at most of the time. Now in my previous video I was using the Cine EI mode and like I mentioned I did make some mistakes with the white balance but I will say one thing that definitely helped a lot is being able to import LUTs onto the camera now and being able to expose and see exactly what my image is going to look like pretty close to how it's going to look when the video is finished when I'm done color grading. So I will still pay attention to the waveforms, but being able to expose and just see what looks best with my eye is also a lot easier now. And speaking of LUTs, so with the ability to import LUTs now, it's awesome. I have imported phantom LUTs onto the camera and I am using them for pretty much all of my shooting since I cannot import LUTs onto this monitor. although. After my previous video, I think I'll probably be upgrading monitors uh, sooner rather than later now. So thank you Sony for making me spend more money, but I think it'll be worth it. I'm looking at the small HD Action 5 uh, monitor, I think that'll be a great upgrade. But being able to import LUTs onto the camera is super, super easy. Uh, it's really simple and it takes no time to do. And I could never see myself shooting without the LUTs on to begin with. I use Phantom LUTs, so I have the neutral, I have the tungsten, I have pretty much all of the filmic looks on here. Just so I can get a vibe and just kind of scroll through and check out, see what I might be color grading this footage in in post before I ever actually make it to post while I'm still out in the field filming, which is really, really convenient. Now there are other new features that came with the new update, such as timecode, but timecode doesn't really pertain to me all that much, so I don't really have much to say about it. But I know there are a lot of people contemplating not upgrading, not updating their firmware because they don't want to lose that PP8 or they don't want to lose S-Log2, and realistically I think it's best to just update. It almost feels like a new camera in a way, so just think of it almost like you're upgrading cameras. One thing I really appreciate that Sony changed on this camera, which bothered me for a long time, is they removed all information from the visible video, so you no longer have a bunch of stuff, a bunch of icons on your screen blocking your video. Now you can see your full, your full video image and all of your information, like your shutter, your iris, your ISO, everything is on the top and the bottom, which is an amazing feature, and I'm so glad Sony implemented that from their FX6 and FX9 cameras. One issue that I've heard that people have been having with this update is apparently the autofocus is worse. Personally, I have not noticed a change in the autofocus, so I can't really say much about that either since I haven't had any issues regarding the autofocus. But in the end, I really gotta say I love the new update to the FX3. Rarely ever do I actually get excited about updating the th firmware to a camera of mine. So actually waking up and seeing the update to the FX3, I got really excited. I really like everything. Now there are some growing pains, learning, uh, no longer being able to use auto white balance. It sucks, but it's probably for the better in the long run. So we'll make that work, not a problem. 
but other than that being able to switch the isos accordingly an amazing feature and i appreciate it so much it's something that i remember getting my fx3 thinking i would be able to do and then not being able to do it and being pissed and always having to scroll through the isos and then you accidentally go one over and then your image is super grainy but now you no longer have that issue and it's really awesome so i was able to make some changes thanks to that i have iso on number three here i have my white balance on two to make adjustments and i have my LUTs to change on five which is super streamlined and I no longer have to dig through settings or whatever else to make adjustments to this stuff. So everything is super convenient except for maybe the Y balance but in the end, like I've said, it'll be for the better. Other than that, I really appreciate everything that Sony has done to change this camera and really separate it from the A7S III. So people can no longer talk crap about this camera and say, oh, it's just the A7S III. And I think this camera has now solidified itself as basically a baby cinema camera. The video footage looks as good as ever. I don't really notice the difference going from 640 to 800. And as long as you expose properly, the 12,800 ISO is has basically zero grain to it. And it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. And it's the main reason I bought the FX3 to begin with. And now I'm just even more happy that I made this purchase. If you have any questions about the FX3, I haven't really made a video talking about the FX3 in the past, although I've been using it for about the past six months. So if you have any questions about this camera, just let me know. There's people that think I film my videos with, with the A7C as well. No, I film all my videos with the FX3. Absolutely love this camera. So if you have any questions about it, just let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to answer some questions. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please remember to like the video and subscribe. I really appreciate it. It helps me continue growing and reaching a larger audience. And have a good one. Go out and shoot.